Gift of Tongues, Speaking in Tongues, Biblical Correction to Doctrines of Men. Speaking in Tongues in Hebrew Bible referred to as glossolalia, made up of two Greek words, glossa and lalia. This means language, either language of men, angels, or of God. Misconception 1. Speaking in tongues is only understandable to men. Wrong. Bible does not say tongues is language of men only. Rather, Bible speaks both. Tongues can be language of angels or of Holy Spirit or of men, three different entities. Proof. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels if I do not have love? Normally, tongues are not understood by men because their spirit speaks to God. There is a clear proof for this. Proof. 1 Corinthians 14.2 For he who speaks in tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. No one, only God understands this heavenly language. Another proof. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I am saying. Even the person speaking do not understand Holy Spirit language, or angel language, or man's language that they have not learned. Clearly, Holy Spirit language or angelic tongues it's not understandable by the person speaking it or others who do not know the language. There are only two exceptions. Number one, those who have gift of interpretation can understand the gift of tongues. Number two, in the case of man's language, only someone who knows that language can understand the gift of tongues. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. This is example of tongues spoken in man's language, and many use this verse to disprove that tongues is not angelic language or language of God, the Holy Spirit, calling it babbling nonsense. There are over 6,500 languages around the world, and they sound all totally different from each other, from Norway, Germany, to Ethiopian, and far tribes of Africa, to Thailand, Vietnamese, etc. If someone who had the gift of tongues in Liechtenstein or Nauru or Tuvalu, no one would understand it and think the person is just babbling or making it up. However, that is only an assumption and not the truth because most never heard such language before and we all know assumption is not the truth. How many languages can you identify today? 5? 10? Remember, there are over 6,500 plus languages in the world. To judge whether one is speaking in tongues or not is to say that you know all the 6,500 plus languages in the world plus angel language and language of Holy Spirit. Misconception 2. Gift of tongues was only valid gift in the early 1st century churches and not for today. This is wrong. There is no scriptures that says tongues was only for 1st century churches, period. It is the gift of Holy Spirit who is still here on earth today. The verse that doctrines of men used to support the claim speaking in tongues is not for today is 1 Corinthians 13.8 Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that 
which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then, face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know, just as I also am known. When the perfect has come, tongues will cease, be no more, the perfect. Are we in that perfect time? No, we are in the time of needing grace. Verse 12, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then, face to face, then refers to perfect. We do not see Jesus face to face on earth right now, We don't have this face-to-face -face relationship with Jesus Christ right now, but in heaven. The perfect has not come yet. Jesus did not return yet. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. We are not in the perfect time now, but rather in part time. When Paul was speaking, Jesus was not present on earth just like now. Jesus is still not here and we live on the time where we need the Holy Spirit to help us keep our faith. Paul spoke in tongues long after the day of Pentecost came. If Paul was waiting for that when the perfect comes, then we do not have the perfect time right now. Nothing is perfect if you know the world is full of imperfection and we are also imperfect and still sinning. Being tempted by devil, we still need repentance and blood of Jesus to cleanse us daily. Only when face to face with Jesus in heaven, we will not be speaking in tongues nor prophesying nor healing nor delivering people nor needing any miracles done for we will be with Jesus without the devil the perfect heaven. Remember, Paul received gift of tongues way later than the day of Pentecost. There is no scriptures that claim tongues is not for today. Don't be deceived. Paul later even laid hands on others and they received gift of tongues. Acts 19.6 And when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. There are 10 gifts of the Holy Spirit, faith, healing, miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophesying, discernment of spirits, knowledge, wisdom, and love. These are the main gifts of the Holy Spirit. Don't we need all of them still today? Yes, we do. And good news is that we can have them. This is not a scam nor a joke. Speaking in tongues is referred to as praying in spirit. 1 Corinthians 14.14 14. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. But I don't understand what I'm saying. Well then, what shall I do? I'll do both. I'll pray in the spirit and I'll pray in words I understand. I'll sing the spirit and I'll sing in words I understand. 1 Corinthians 14.16 says, for if you praise God only in the Spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise God along with you? This clearly shows tongues are not understandable and you can praise in tongues. If you speak in tongues, you are worshiping God in the Spirit. It is a Holy Spirit power given to worship God in Spirit. Who can speak from Spirit except by help from God? No one. We are to worship God in the Spirit and in truth. John 4.24 For God is Spirit, so those who worship Him must worship in Spirit and in truth. Also, this tells us we are to both pray in words and in tongues. Both, not one. Also, sing in tongues 
and in words, two different things. For in spirit and in truth, we are to worship God. Misconception 4. Speaking in tongues is only for unbelievers as a sign. Wrong. These are what praying in tongues actually do. Number 1. Holy Spirit helps us praying when we don't know what to pray for. Romans 8.26 And the Holy Spirit helps us in our distress, for we don't even know what we should pray for, nor how we should pray. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. This is gift of praying in tongues. And the Father know, who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Notice that if you pray in tongues, God makes everything work together for the good of those who love God and you get to fulfill your purpose given by God. Tongues edifies a person. 1 Corinthians 14.4 he who speaks in tongues edifies, strengthens himself. Number three, tongues increases our faith. Jude one twenty. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Number four, keeps you in the love of God. Because gift of tongues edifies you to be faithful to God, being full of holy faith. What did our Lord Jesus Christ say about speaking in tongues? Mark 16, 17-18 And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and they, if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Did Jesus Christ say gift of tongues is only temporary gift for the first church? No. Then we shouldn't cast out demons, nor lay hands, and pray for the sick to be healed either. The verses may... Many doctrines have against the gift of tongues are these. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but not have love, I have become sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Yes, love should be the center of all good deeds. However, is this saying gift of tongues is useless and therefore not needed? No. This means tongues without love is useless. But tongues plus love or knowledge plus love is useful. We are to earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 30, 31. But earnestly desire the best gifts. Also, Paul clearly states this. Do not forbid speaking in tongues. Do not forbid. 1 Corinthians 14.39 Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy, and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Prophecy is also a gift, where Holy Spirit is speaking through a person, just like tongues, but in actual understandable language. It is not just speaking Bible scriptures as some claim it is, else we do not need to desire earnestly to prophesy. If that was so, we can just read and speak Bible and call that prophesying. Please don't listen to modern day Pharisees, no power of God in them. Is speaking in tongues involuntary act? For those who receive the gift, they can speak in tongues at will. However, that language itself is not changed by our will. Are we not to speak tongues in church? Paul says, Do not speak in tongues in church because it, is, it brings confusion. 
1 Corinthians 14, 21 to 25. We have to understand that they did not have speakers and microphones like today. So if everyone is praying in tongues, it is loud. Therefore, one could not preach if they all spoke in tongues. That is the only reason why Paul did not want us to pray in tongues at church. There is no point of having a disorganized church. But now we have speakers and mic, so times have changed. So pray in your own time, unless you're praying in a prayer meeting, where praying in tongues is controlled by a speaker being able to tell everyone to pray or stop. Misconception 4. Can it be taught? No. Acts 2, 4 says, They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Bible does not say one can learn it. It is the act of Holy Spirit. And He controls. How do I receive gift of tongues? By asking and seeking God for it. A powerful minister of God who prays diligently in tongues can lay hands on you and you can get the Holy Spirit baptism just as Paul gave unto others. However, I do not support this because I do not trust every man and I know that God can give to those who genuinely ask and seek this gift with fasting and praying. I have received it alone in my room in my house after a month of praying and seeking God, fasting one day out of each week for three weeks. Meanwhile, I only read Bible, prayed, and went to school and worked. It works. If someone like me can receive the, then anyone can. My fiancé also received the gift of tongues this way, and it only took her three weeks after becoming a Christian. Anyone who asks diligently, seeks earnestly, knocks desperately, God will give. Bible plainly speaks about gift of tongues. There is no need of extra knowledge outside of Bible to disprove that tongues is not of, for today. God is same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus has not returned yet, and the Holy Spirit is here on earth today, doing the same things He did when Jesus sent Him for us. Holy Spirit is our helper. Don't believe man-made wrong doctrines. Pray and read the Bible. Ephesians 6, 18, and pray in the Spirit, capital S means Holy Spirit, on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Jesus rebuked his disciples for not being able to pray one hour, Matthew 26, 40. Then he came to the disciples and found them asleep and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus was known for always praying in the Mount of Olives away from the people. He by habit prayed alone in the mountain. Mark 1.35, Matthew 14.28, John 6.15. He was a man of prayer. In fact, Jesus prayed a lot every day, and Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, says that he prayed in tongues more than all, being a passionate zealot for Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 14, 18 I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. How can you even claim this? That's how much bold he was. This tells us very important fact how to be victorious against temptations and actually fulfill the will of the Father in heaven. It is by praying, and especially to fulfill God's purpose for us, we need to be praying in tongues just as Paul did. For Romans 8.27 says, Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Paul recognized the importance of praying perfectly according to the Father's will which is possible by letting the Holy Spirit pray for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. This praying without ceasing is impossible to do if you do not have Holy Spirit tongues, because tongues do not require using brain usage. Therefore, one can read while praying in tongues, work while praying in tongues, 
and do all sorts of things while praying in tongues, because the Spirit prays, not your mind. It is also a great gift to be filled with the Holy Spirit and save our time living in a busy world such as today. I encourage everyone not to trust men's doctrines, but rather find the truth from the Bible and by praying to the Father in Jesus Christ's name. Please look up verses yourselves and find the truth. God will not hide the truth from you if you seek the truth. I have no reason to lie about this matter, for I have asked God myself and was revealed the truth and was baptized by the Holy Spirit alone in my room. God bless you all and may our Lord Jesus Christ lead you to the truth. In Jesus' name I earnestly pray. God bless you.